the answer to the post time brain teaser? Maltese artist won the inaugural Bobby Quillen Memorial in 2007 with a time of 152. He was driven by Yannick Gingra. We just found out that Yannick Gingra won the 2007 Quillen with Maltese Artist. Now, last year, he won the Quillen with Foiled Again. And this driver is back to look for Victory Lane once again in 2011. Yannick began his career in his native country of Canada. But in 2001, he started driving at Yonkers Raceway in New York. And before you knew it, he was awarded the Rising Star of the Year for the whole country, just a couple seasons later. Nowadays, he drives at the Meadowlands, Chester, and all over the Grand Circuit. Yannick has won over 3,700 races and 67.8 million in purses. Of course, Yannick has driven some great equines to Victory Lane, including Darlin's Delight, who won close to three million during her career, and Pastor Steven, the 2010 two-year-old trotting champion. Last year, Yannick won the Quillen Memorial with Foiled Again. The 150 in one mile was the fastest ever at Harrington Raceway. The duo is back for action in this year's event to defend their title. Foiled again is a little horse, right? But that doesn't seem to be a problem for him, does it? No, he thinks he's big. You know, he raced like a big horse. Yeah, uh, I mean, you see sometimes a little horse like him, they need to trip out or things like that. He can't take no abuse. But uh, like I said, he raced like a big horse, and uh, you don't, you wouldn't know he's little. That's for sure. Okay, now we're gonna talk about you. You are a third generation horseman, but there was actually a time in your life that you weren't even interested in horses, right? Yeah, growing up I loved it. I was always in the barn, but then like uh, during my teenage year, I just uh, want to hang out with my buddies and have a good time. And I wasn't much, but my, my dad really didn't really want me to jog. He wanted me to clean stall first in the morning and then we kind of butt head there a little bit. You know, I didn't want to, I just want to be on the track. I didn't want to be in the barn. And uh, finally, when I was about 16 or 17, he needed help and I won. You know, I get to go in the track and not clean stall. So he's staying in the barn and I was going outside, you know, so uh, and I came back and uh, that's always, uh, from there, that's what I wanted to do. Now, I read that you have a degree in accounting and you've been a bartender. Are both of those things true? Yeah, both of them are true. Uh, that, no, that was mostly like, to please my mom and get you know, some kind of college degree and then uh, something to fall back on. I didn't know how successful I was going to be or what, no, what was going to happen when I started driving horses. So I did go to school as far as accounting. And then, um, you know, I was working a little bit like it was an OTB by my house and there was a little bar there at the same time. So I worked behind the bar and had a good time doing that. It was fun. and. Uh, the, uh, that's how I spend my teenage years. Now, you have been a rising star of the year, which is super cool, but the award that I just think is out of this world is the President's Award that you got last year for, you know, going to schools, trying to get another generation interested in harness racing, you know, working like donating money, toys for tots, Standard Bread Retirement Foundation. What an honor! I know, you know, and it's something I take pride in. You know, I mean, I think that there, we definitely don't do enough as far as getting you know, people to the track. And um, I think there's a lot of racetrack that need to change, the, you know, their view about things like that. And it, like I said, it's something I'm really proud of, and I'm proud, of, you know, obviously, to get the award last year, and, and it meant something to me. And but I, I still think that I, like I said that night, I still feel I didn't do enough. And I think we, uh, everybody, has to look at themselves in the mirror, and maybe we can do a little, a little bit more and get them back in there. Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. And, you know, I'm trying to get that President's Award, so if you want to put, like, a good word in for me to anybody, you know, just, I'm just putting it out there and just putting it out there. I also want to mention another reason you got the President's Award is because, like, you are so friendly to the media. I do some other shows, and I'm always sticking a mic in Yannick's face, and I'm not going to mention any names. <clears throat> Brian Sears. Do you know that there are some people that have run away from me like in an interview and don't you think like everybody needs to step up? Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, people do look at that stuff, but my wife will tell you to be the first one to tell you I love to talk, so it's not a problem. I like, I like to be in front of the camera. I'm not, no, I don't, that don't bother me. It bothers other people maybe, but uh, but I think I think it's good, you know. I mean, like, I think it's good, like, you know, it, not only the, no, in front of television, but as far as, like, autograph session and things like that, I think, you no, know, people want to put a face, you no, know, without the helmet, without the colors and things like that, so I think yeah, it's important to do a little bit, you know. 
I'm thinking here, I have like this whole brainstorming thing going on. Light bulb just went up over my head, all right? This is like a hustle. We could team up and I'll be your agent, okay? And we're gonna start Yannick Jingra's School of Media Friendliness, okay? <laughs> And he would be teaching like football players to motocross riders, you know, how to be friendly to the media. So just think about that. We'll ponder over it a little bit and see what happens, all right? <laughs> you know what else I read? When you moved to Yonkers, did you like roomie with Danny Dubay? How was that? Yeah, when I first when I first moved to the U.S., I actually lived with him for like maybe eight, nine months. You know, I mean, when I first came, he was a big help, you know. I, you know, I came here, I didn't have nothing. I had a few horses, a few thousand dollars, and that's all I had, you know. Like I didn't, uh, I wasn't driving very much at home. I didn't have a name, you know, a name yet or nothing like that. And it was big not to have to pay a mortgage and have to have, you know, all that stuff, you know. So it was, uh, it was definitely a big help and a big reason why I got to stay because the first six months was pretty tough. I, uh, I wasn't driving many horses. I wasn't making much money. So if I had a mortgage or, you know, things like that to pay, I might not have made it, you know what I mean? So, like, it was definitely a big, big help. I'm a, like, horrible judge of character, so I'm going to go out on, on a limb by saying this. All right, now, were you Felix and Danny Dubay was Oscar? Because I'm a total slob. Like, how did that work? No, actually, like he, uh, no, he's pretty. No, we're both like about the same that way. You know what I mean? Like we're both like uh, pretty clean, like you no know, things in the right spot. So we actually got along that way. All right, that's always a help. That's always. A, I had a roommate in college once. She was so protective of everything. She even put her name on the toilet paper. Swear <laughs> that is like a true story. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the last thing that we want to touch on because this is really important. You're a Family Guy. Tell me about your wife and your two and a half kids. I know they had definitely two and a half, like almost three and a half kids. Though we as, as big as my wife is right now, but they, uh, no, I definitely am. You know, I mean, like uh, a lot of people ask me what their pastime are, like you know, playing golf or this or that. You know, I mean, I'm into sport a little bit, you no know, hockey and stuff like that. But as far as uh, my time off, I want to spend it with my kids. You know, I mean, like uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm away from home so much that uh, if I have a half an hour off or something like that, I want to be home. And you know, at first when I started traveling with all the, you know, the stake races and stuff, it was fun. You'd be on the road, you'd, you know, go out after the race or whatever. But ever since I've had kids, you know, I just want to come home. I want to be in the morning get up with my kids or you know play with them as much as I want I can you know I mean like uh, I see them grow up already my little boy's already six and I can see like you know the time flies by you know so uh, they uh, soon enough they're not gonna want to spend time with me so I'll be I'll have plenty of time to go out then you know but uh, for right now like uh, that's my uh, number one priority All right. yeah that's a good rule to live live by because honestly they grow up so fast, they don't want to spend time with you when they get to a certain age. I already, I have a nine-year-old going on 10, and he like won't let me hold his hand anymore. And I'm like, what's up with that, you know? So, well, Yannick, thanks for being on the show, and good luck in the final. Thank you very much. Speaking of the Quillen Memorial Final, Harrington's signature race is coming up next, so keep it here.